Um, I continue my, my comments on Savitri Devi. I'm, I'm making the exegesis of Savitri Devi. Um, <clears throat> I, I would like to quote a sentence from Nietzsche. One must, one must still have chaos in oneself to be able to give birth to a dancing star. And what I understand about God from an abstract point of view and that what people uh, should understand is that God is, is, is a self-conflicting being who has chaos within himself. And the reason why the stars dance in the heavenly spheres, as modern scientists um, acknowledge, uh, the, the rationality and the harmonious rhythm of the movements of the of the stars and of the planet, the, the cosmic symphony. And it is it is God who makes the stars move and, and, and shine and, and dance in this cosmic harmony and it is also God which creates chaos and uh, I know I know myself to be inspired and and I'm not some kind of, of, of so-called prophet or whatever who say oh believe me I have divine inspiration no it's because I am made in such a way that the more I understand ideas and make connections between the dots the more I elevate myself because that's how I function I need to understand I'm I need to understand that's that's all that's all I need and when I'm in these spiritual moments it's simply because I have read and made connections and, and connected the dots within my mind and I feel a I will be honest, I feel a will to power within me uh, uh, to, towards greater and greater understanding and, and I want to I want to bring order within chaos. That's, that's what I, I want deep down. And when I'm in this spiritual mood, I am, I am afraid of myself because my, my, what I call my spiritual self is so high that that it, it scares me <laughs> um, what I know to be true is frightening because my, my lower self that which you see does not understand and he is afraid and he is selfish and he is human all too human and um, yeah the song that I have in mind as of now, and the purpose of cultural Hegelianism is to unite religion, pop culture, philosophy, and it's Rain Over Me, Let It Rain Over Me by, by uh, Marcus Antonius, or Mar uh, Mark Anthony and, and, and Pitbull. Um, I'm out of my mind, let it rain over me, I'm rising so high, out of my mind. And, and, and this song, uh, when I'm out of my mind, and when people are out of their minds, in a rational sense, it means that they connect to a higher self. And that's scary to lose one's own self, that which we consider to be our real self, but from an abstract point of view, it's not the real self, because the real self is the one universal consciousness. And and, and people are afraid to lose themselves, which I understand because I am afraid to lose my empirical self. And this is the cause of all my, my, my fears. Um, I will continue to comment on, on, on Savitri Devi, the, the cyclic view of history. Uh, that's kind of dialectical irony, but when you understand dialectics, it's, it's just... It's just... Uh, dialectics. She praises the, the 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 craftsmen because they put their soul into their work. The tiller of the soil, in personal contact with Mother Earth and the Sun and all the seasons, is becoming more and more a figure of the past. So she has this view that 
the 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 the, the farmer, the, the ancestral farmer, that which lives in in direct connection with with his environment and which shapes his environment, and the craftsman who who puts his soul, but actually it's his mind, is reflected in his work. The 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 the, the work of art of a craftsman is spirit or mind, not spirit, but kind of both made manifest it's a sensuous repre representation of his own inner determination so it's uh, uh it's it's creation it's it's will and intelligence made manifest and made sensuous and and phenomenal in the sense that it's a phenomenal appearance and a, a craftsman is is happy in his in his uh job because he he can watch his own creation being brought forth and it, it's an, an ob objectification i don't know if it's an english word it's a, a becoming objective of his own inner mind and he, he finds the his own reflection in his own work and the reason why modern um industry is so um dehumanizing it's because the workers they 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 only do a part they don't see the whole the the guy in the factory he he has no um he he he's just a moment and a very boring moment in in the process of the 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 full creation of the whole product and the division of labor which is so he heavily criticized by the marxists here you have a far right uh national socialist priest priest priestess uh, who says the same thing is that man wants to become whole and have his inner being reflected in the in the external uh, appearance and and she criticizes the the modern division of labor in a sense and and she although she was anti-communist and anti-marxist she admits that the view of of the young Karl Marx with with the alienation of the worker it was correct because what a, a worker wants is to find his own reflection in his work. And that's what God wants. God wants to, to know himself in his own creation to, and to recognize himself. And that is uh, the true joy is to be, to be yourself outside of yourself. So, yeah. Uh, then she talks about what the Hindus call the sadhana, which is the work for which their deeper nature has appointed them, their life's dedication. And in my best moments, I know that within me I have a light. And although I know that from a strictly uh, formal standpoint, I am what Hegel calls the negative, and I don't like being the negative, but... Um, the negative is is the part which is separated from the whole and it can have a broad view of the whole because the whole is the world confronting him and he can enlighten the whole. That's what the Christian call Lucifer, the light bringer. It's the, the son of God separated from God and in his separation from God he sinned against the, the father but at the same time, he he stole the divine light and brought it to mankind. And that's a very ambiguous figure. And that's what uh, Prometheus, the mythology says that Prometheus stole the, 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 the lightning from Zeus and he brought it to mankind, which enabled progress. And that's a contradictory figure because he was punished by God. But at the same time, he's admired by some humans and despised by others. It's a contradictory figure because he enables progress, but progress means negation. So Lucifer, Prometheus, is what Hegel calls the negative in a way. Um, yeah, and they say that modern humanity, not human beings, but the, the, the value of, of hum humaneness, humanity, they, they, they feel good about themselves by condemning the, the horrors of, of their enemies. Look at uh, uh, what the Russians do and all that. They, they project onto others uh, the, 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 the horrors, but 
I know from a spiritual standpoint that spirit must reconcile himself within, with his own horrors. And that's the most difficult thing because it's so easy to put the blame on others. But when you enter the mind of God, you realize that the horrors in the world are your own horrors. And that's why God himself does not want to be God. That's why God erases his own memory, because he doesn't want to, to, to know that he is the root of all evil. And that's why God erase his own his own memory and but because he's God he's programmed to reconstruct and remember himself and this process of forgetfulness remembrance is the whole divine life uh, yeah and then she says uh, the divinely established cyclic law that governs all manifestations of existence in time, the law of eternal return, the, the only faith in harmony with the everlasting laws of being. But the laws of being are also the laws of thought, because pure being and pure thought is just identity with itself, and they are identical, and that's why Hegel's logic begins with the unity of thought and being, and in the dialectical unfolding of the process thought is separated from being which in the the realm of of, of the, 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 the the spirit and the, the consciousness is the moment of the negative and the whole process of the negative that which that which is separate the subject which is separate from the object is to reconstruct intellectually uh, the the unity uh, with the object, by, by thinking the object and by recognizing his own thoughts and his own essence in the, the world that confronts him. And this is the whole process of separation and reunion and re-establishing self-identity. So she understood the, the, the everlasting laws of being, but what she didn't know was that the everlasting laws of being are the everlasting laws of logic. And... I will be honest with myself. I am I am a horrible person, but I have also good in me. And and when I I understood that a few years ago, it was 2018. I understood that World War II, Hegel was was a, a, a communist thinker back then because the communists had appropriated Hegel, and the right wing was against Hegel, and that's why she could not understand Hegel because Hegel back then was in the, on the side of the communists and yeah but Hegel would come back to to reunite both sides and 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 and, and to show them that being on, on the one side he's, he's also on the other and, and that's the whole movement of Hegelianism because uh, the most Hegelian sorry sometimes spiritual jokes are, are so profound that I can't help laughing. The most anti-Hegelian thing you could do, uh, no, the most Hegelian thing you could do is to be a anti-Hegelian, because by, by contradicting Hegel, you are proving Hegel right. And this movement of self-contradiction and, and self-contradiction and self-negation as a means to, to assert the truth, that's Hegel. And uh, yeah. And she talks about those who never lost the vision of the everlasting order decreed by the sun uh, and who have fought in a selfless spirit to impress that vision upon others. And um, yeah, so that's what I had to say. That the, the order of being consists in, in bringing chaos within order and re-establishing order. And this is the, the dialectical process of being and of which I am a part. And uh, yeah.